There is a magical operation of maximum importance. The initiation of a new Aeon. When it becomes necessary to utter a word, the whole planet must be bathed in blood. Fulfilling the circle of Malak of the Sarafan, you are hereby damned. The pleasures of the flesh are no longer yours. You have but one of us, damned warrior. You will serve us for eternity. The tavern's closing. Best be on your way, stranger. What? No mug of ale for a weary traveller from distant Corhagen? I can reward you well, for I am of noble blood. I stay open for no man in these dark times. Things come with the night that no sane man would welcome. And so I left. Cold of heart and soul. Forced to the road and the long, bitter night. That's him! Hey, Victus! End it! Now! I didn't care if I was in heaven or hell. All I wanted was to kill my assassins. Sometimes you get what you wish for. The necromancer Mortanius offered me a chance for vengeance, and like a fool, I jumped at his offer without considering the cost. Nothing is free, not even revenge. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> you will have the blood you hunger for. I awoke to the pain of a new existence, in a dank womb of darkness and decay. The sanctuary spell enables me to travel to my crypt, where the soil of my grave provides me respite. I often resort to this when I am weak and need nourishment. Reputed to have been ripped from the chest of the greatest vampire to have ever existed, Janos Audron, the heart of darkness restores vampiric unlife. Life is precious, Janos discovered, as it was torn, throbbing and bleeding from his own body. This ancient vial bears with it a dark gift indeed, for with it my life force is increased. These ancient symbols of power contain raw magical energy that increases my own capacity to summon energy for the spawning of spells. <laughs> Within the walls of these chambers I could find respite, and if I so chose, resume my journey when my weariness abated. The world had changed to my eyes. I had not expected such cruelty from the light, for in the embrace of the sun I could find no comfort, only malice. This would change in time for the worse, along with other things. When rainfall comes, vampires are wise to find shelter from its acidic touch. Curious devices hurl bolts of whirling energy and eviscerate my human enemies by stripping ragged flesh from blood-stained bone.
Hunger and weakness are no bar to vengeance's call. I would find my slayers and send them back whence I came. <coughs> 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 Trickery is this? There he is! I'll kill him! Kill you, massacre! If I put you down once, we can do it again. <coughs> 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 Their sneering faces were forever etched upon my memory. I had crossed death for this moment. My mind was empty save for one thought. I would kill. <laughs> there is no greater release than that from vengeance sated. With my assassins dead, my quest was over. Tis not over, Cain. These fools were merely the instruments of your murder, not the cause. Look to their masters, look to the pillars, and gain way to the fortress of the mind. This was where the bloody deed of my murder took place. The necromancer had offered me no warning as to what my resurrection would entail, and yet I must confess in my haste I had not sought one. Was his gift a curse? I would seek the pillars for an answer. <laughs> Night dawns, and with it the vampire grows stronger. The pillars of Nosgoth. Even in life, few sights have moved me such as this. I marvel that such beauty should grace our dying world. Lepraptor, your madness has shattered our dreams and blinded you. Keep your distance, or I'll send you back to hell, spirit! There is nothing left of me to fear, vampire. I'm only a shadow of my former self, Ari, the balance of the Circle of Nine. Even so, I can provide the answers you seek. I seek 
only a cure. There is no cure for death, only release. You must destroy the sorcery, the sorcery that is now poisoning Nosgoth. Only then will you realize peace. The nine of the Protectors of Hope were sworn to use their powers to preserve our world. Now these pillars have been corrupted by a traitor. My murder at the hands of this beast drove my love Napraptor mad. Now he spreads misery and pain among the circle, crumbling the very foundation of Nosgoth. You must restore balance. You must right the pillars of Nosgoth. I care not for the fate of this world. Then for yourself, Cain. Beware the unspoken. Not Raptor, with his blind act of vengeance, threatened to destroy all of Nosgoth. Each Circle member was bonded to the pillar he served. The pillars reflected the mental state of their servants, and as the minds of the Circle degenerated and descended farther into dementia, the pillars crumbled. To restore them, each member of the Circle had to die, and the artifact that served as their link to the pillar had to be returned. Only when all the pillars were restored did Ariel claim my curse would end. And so, my hunt for Nupraptor began. These beacons serve as landmarks during my flights in bat form. Once I have committed their locations to memory, I can always return. In bat form, I can travel great distances with ease. From my vantage in the heavens, no region of Nosgoth is forbidden to me. natural light weakens a vampire, magical light can have many uses indeed. <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> 
As daylight chases darkness, the vampire's power wanes. Pine form enables me to move like lightning and leap over obstacles barring my path, but the guise of the wolf brings with it its own kind of hunger and rage.
Energy Bolt employs magical force in its rawest form. A messy spell, but a potent one nonetheless. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your strength has increased, for our blood enhances. Do not be greedy, vampire. You have had your fill. The village of Nachtholm was typical of Nosgoth peasantry. Yet amidst the farmers and smithies of the quiet country life prowled brigands and cut purses.
Of all the methods I employ, this is perhaps the cruelest, causing my victim's body to shrink on itself, crushing bones and rupturing organs till the pressure inside bursts the sack of fleshy skin, spraying its contents for all to see. My magic extends into very exotic disciplines, such as the manipulation of time. I am able to slow time down so I can move about quick as a wolf, while all others move as though they were mired in mud. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. The rain will do you no harm, for our blood preserves. The bastards and Stenchen Crow shun me as Nozgov shuns them. I know what it means to be an outsider vampire. I fear you not. But remember this, there are others who will speak to you, so long as you know how to look. This lunatic was delighted to see me. Perhaps his madness would reveal a greater truth.
One must be wary in dealing with the spirit forges. The wraith and shades that inhabit them offer items beyond mortal dreams in exchange for a sampling of your blood. The wraith smiths forge their items with forfeit souls. Shed your blood for me, and these artifacts will be yours. So, you come to the spirit board for help, do you, vampire? Trade your secrets for the blood of the dead, I will. The gypsies, purveyors of distrust and superstition. Most of their babble should be taken with a pinch of salt, since the gypsies often tinker with weary travelers' minds. However, a few gypsies have something interesting to say. There are benefits to traveling beneath a human guise. The threat to my person is lessened and much information can be gleaned. However, the illusion is flimsy, and any act of aggression on my part can break the spell. Something is amiss. The wagons from Avon has just never turned up. Vassabunt lay, its glory now stained and faded, a faithful child in the looming shadow of Nupraptor's retreat. Something is amiss. The wagons from Avon has just never turned up. Nupraptor's keep lay west of Vassabunt. I would seek to cut the cancer from its heart. This object strike an enemy, rot and decay would instantly eat their flesh and leave only a pool of blood and tissue. For a time after, the toxins are still active and therefore lethal to the touch.
The wind carried screams from the west. I couldn't help but smile. Someone else in this world was suffering more than I. The gaping moor of Nupraptor's retreat rained upon Nosgoth all his pain and misery. The disease begged to be cleansed. The mentalist Nupraptor was renowned through Nosgos for his tricks of the mind, telepathy and telekinesis. Pilgrims travelled from all across the land seeking the comfort of his lies. I sought not his wisdom, but his life.
You dare intrude upon my sanctuary? Can I not mourn in peace? Leave, leave, and let my solitude be complete. I came upon one of Nupraptor's serving girls, catatonic with fear, choking out half words through bloody, broken teeth. Although tempted by hunger, I stayed my hand, allowing her to tell her story. She spoke of her lord, Nupraptor, driven to insanity by the brutal slaying of his beloved Ariel. She spoke of his self-mutilation, sewing his eyes and lips shut to deny the outside world. Fueled by despair and hopelessness, he turned his magic on the circle, infecting their minds with his madness. Nupraptor cared for nothing now, save his pathetic self-pity. Scars such as hers would never heal. Death would only be a mercy. The cretin squandered life and left it seeping on the floor. Such waste was a travesty. Perhaps Nupraptor needed to be taught a lesson as to the value of blood.
When conjured, the energy bank permits me access to mass amounts of magical energy for a brief period of time. However, when the moment passes, I will be drained of all magic, unable to cast even the simplest of spells. From the depths of the retreat's eye sockets, I viewed Nosgoth in a different fashion. The glass seemed to warp the image and taint the color, <laughs> as if Nosgoth needed assistance in making its corruption apparent. to fail the circle once more? Leave, Paladin. I do not need your protection. Come, Cain. Come, share my pain. So, this was the mentalist Nupraptor, this broken, pathetic little man. Yet crippled as he was, he would not yield without battle. Very well, old fool. If it is death you seek, I will not deny you. <laughs>
Convince Ariel that I have accomplished my task. The mace is amongst my most useful of weapons, for it merely stuns my victims, allowing me ample time to feed. The mace is amongst my most useful of weapons, for it merely... I placed Nupraptor's head before the Pillar of the Mind and watched on as it dissolved into the stone. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Nupraptor was but the genesis. Forever tainted by his madness, the circle was beyond redemption. For them, absolution lay only in death. In me, they would find their deliverance. But first I had to defeat their shepherd. Malik, defender of the Nine, lay in a keep to the far north, past Vasabunt. It was time for me to test the wrath of the Pillar of Conflict. Death in the circle breathes life to the pillars. For every pillar there is a token. Only with these shall they be restored. But to reach a warrior, you must first breach his ward. Find Malak and destroy him. Only then will the circle fall.
One must be wary in dealing with the spirit forges. The wraith and shades that inhabit them offer items beyond mortal dreams in exchange for a sampling of your blood. The wraith smiths forge their items with forfeit souls. Worms and maggots fed upon his festering skin. The scent of tainted blood seeped through the wounds upon which they feasted. Pity. Such a waste. Good blood gone bad. Corhagen, my home. The finest city in all of Nosgoth, rich in vanity and conceit. I had no delusions as to the welcome I would receive. Death and disease stalked these streets. Bodies lay most in the very spots in which fate had taken them. A perfect homecoming. Very Victor! Very <laughs> Victor! <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
Invoking this spell cloaks me under a protective aegis. Whatever spell is cast at me will be reflected back at the caster, leaving me unharmed. It will only last for a short time, however, before leaving me vulnerable once more. Hey, Victor! 
Lower forms of undead fall swiftly to deception. With the bone armor, they are not as eager to challenge me. These curious Bone armor.
my body of any dangerous poisons. Quite useful with all the filth I find myself surrounded by. Eviseration. Let fate choose my enemy's demise. sword. allows me to exploit the petty prejudices of man. Minor grievance would escalate to murderous rage. And oh, the sweet terror when the spell wore off and they saw their hands covered with their neighbor's blood.
Malik's bastion, perched defiantly on the mountain top, black as night against the blanket of snow. What manner of man would choose a land so harsh and utterly devoid of life? I know you are here, demon. The stench of death clings to you. The interior was as cold and sterile as the snow outside, with empty suits of armor and sharp, cruel steel lining the walls. Powered the machinery. With its destruction, the deafening shrieks of the machines ceased to echo throughout the bastion. It was now time to silence the machine's maker. You try my patience, fledgling. Care to try my blade instead? The guards at the gate offered no resistance. They were frozen solid, and dead as they stood, their flesh welded to the cold metal of their armor. My eyes yearned from lack of contrast. My mouth ached for want of blood. In this cold wasteland, food was scarce, and my hunger grew. <laughs>
A corpse held court on a tattered throne, grinning malignantly at me through blackened teeth. It is not often that a man sees his own corpse. It is a sobering experience. But I am far less interested in my own corpse than I am in yours. Prepare yourself, vampire!
and malice, their presence in my hands keeps me from employing magic. Yet rest assured, they do little to hamper my relish for slaughter. The Axes It would seem Malik's destiny with my blade was postponed. Perhaps Ariel could offer further guidance. <coughs> 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 High upon the face of these cliffs, hidden amongst the complex network of caves, the underground sanctity of the wise Oracle of Nosgoth lay sleeping. Perhaps it was time to brave the winds and seek out this Oracle from the vantage point of the heavens. Oh, little vampire, the game grows interesting. But with so many pawns, can you find the true player?
Iron Sword a fragile thing. One minor shock properly timed can render them catatonic and ripe for feeding.
The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. The snow will do you no harm, for our blood preserves. Iron Sword. Mm. 
The shield was newly crafted. Its metal shone brightly in the firelight. The crest I did not recognize. A guillotine, its blade still wet with blood. Hidden amidst the many obscure artifacts in that museum, I discovered an ancient chronicle. This passage caught my eye. It was during these dark times, infested with the plague of the undead, that the Circle brought the Seraphan to existence. Trained to be devoutly loyal to the Circle and the perfect exterminators of the undead scourge, they were led to many victories by the righteous paladin, Malek. They cleansed the vampires with fire and released their souls to more blessed realms. There is no wrath as terrible as that of the righteous. I'd read enough. At once, disgusted and intrigued, I placed the book back down in that museum. A nobleman? Seeking wisdom? Death has taught you well. Enough philosophy. I seek answers. Answers, indeed. I have them all if you have the questions. And what are the questions for these answers? King Atmar, the only hope to defeat the legions of the Nemesis. King Atmar, paralyzed by his princess's malaise. King Atmar, the useless. Pray, good sir, what are the questions? A pox upon your tricks and babble, old man. Answer me this. Who is Malik, and how can I defeat him? All in time, Sirrah. Yes, time. Unless you master it, it will master you. And now it's time for your answer. Malik, defender of the Nine, and last of the Seraphim Sorcerer Priests, his vanity led to the slaughter of the Circle at the hands of the vampire Vorathor. For his failing, his spirit was fused to a hellish set of magical armor. He has allowed no member of the Circle to fall since. What of this Vorador? Follow the glow of the Ignis Fatuous to the Termagant Forest. Ignis Fatuous? The Ignis Fatuous lights the path to hell, nobleman. Your path. Time, Kay? Next time. Odd. This armor resembled that of the ward and his minions, yet the steel seemed newly fashioned and untarnished by time. I recognize this crest from my youth. Tis the sigil of the mighty lion of Willendorf, blood-stained and rusted upon this battered shield. Through this magic I can stop my enemies in their tracks. Frozen in time, they can do nothing to hinder their own doom. Sometimes I draw out their fate, for the added fear sweetens their blood. Iron Sword <coughs> Vey Victus! <coughs> <laughs> <laughs>
When in mist form, I am invulnerable to physical weapons, blade and claw. I can seep through locked doors and cracks and move swiftly like a shadow fleeing light. Iron Sword The Black Forest reigned here, its kingdom rarely invaded by those that live in the light. But it was called home by this mysterious Vorador. Legend told of a time when Vorador defeated Malek of the Seraphan. If such a man did exist, then he could perhaps be the key to defeating the Ward. Ah! <laughs> 
sword ravages flesh with teeth of metal and flame, leaving only scorched remains. Flame sword.
This spell allows me to enslave my enemies, giving me control of their bodies. When I release my grip, their bodies will shrivel and die as I displace their souls and replace them with my own.
Strange that Vorador would choose a dwelling so perilous to him. The swamp could only offer a vampire hazard and pain. Vorador's keep was hidden deep within the turbigent forest, nestled among vines and creepers that clung desperately to its dark weathered stone. The luxury with which this Vorador surrounded himself was impressive. His wealth would shame the haughty nobles of my former court. That this vulgar display of fortune remained undisturbed was a testament of fear's dominion over greed. Their charms were almost visible through the gauze of their clothing, yet beauty such as theirs delivered only death. For these were Vorador's pets, nothing more than beasts, slave to his will and the easy prey he provided. Vampires, all of them, held in thrall by one stronger still. <laughs> feast. Like cattle awaiting slaughter, men and women dangled from the rusted hooks upon the dungeon walls. Blood and viscera frosted the dirt and stone. The abundance nearly overwhelmed me, for blood is the life. Enemies are quite vicious, and the Chaos Armor extracts from them a heavy price for their bloodlust. The blows are meant for me, but it is their bodies that carry the wounds.
Chaos Armor. than the blood of others. This spell is especially useful in the face of multiple combatants. Beware those with tainted blood. Sanctuary. Blood shower.
The room I had entered had but one purpose. The torture and execution of human beings for the sadistic pleasure of its engineer. Blood was splattered on every surface. The dread and agony of victims past still echoed through the lethal walls. A symphony of terror and agony filled the air. Then, from amidst the cacophony of screaming souls, came the perverse laughter of the vampire himself. Amongst Vorido's possessions, I found an ancient chronicle. Long ago, vampires grew in such number so as to capture the attention of the circle. The Order of the Saraphan, or the Angels of Light, as they were called, was instated to counter the menace. Thus, the Vampire Purge began. The tapestries wove a tale of chaos ignited, an orgy of fire and pain. Undead beings with rotted skins caked with sulphur and ash beckoned at me through a burning abyss. Their tortured stares were a testimonial to the price of weakness. Their fate would not find me, yet blood calls to blood. In the bowels of that black forest, I found something worse than hell. A vision of what I was becoming. It's not often I see one of our own, especially one as young and foolish as yourself. Nonetheless, drink. Drink deep and indulge your gift. Gift? <laughs> Vorador thought my curse a blessing. That we were gods. That mortals offered their blood as sacrifice so that we could enjoy our supernatural powers. And somewhere, deep inside my new self, I knew that he was right. That mortal dreams were prayers. Prayers to us, begging us for power. I pondered this as the decadent old fool prattled on about his past. boorish account of how he defeated Malek of the Seraphim and took his vengeance upon the Circle of Nine for supporting the Seraphim Holy War to exterminate us.
call your dogs. They can feast on your corpses. After slaughtering six of the sheep, I defeated their pathetic little shepherd, Mac. Since then, our kind has not bothered with the cattle, except to feed. And I suggest you do the same. Meddling with the affairs of man can do us no good. Seraphan witch hunts are much too tedious to concern ourselves with. Am I understood, Cain? Good. Take this ring. If you ever need assistance, it will summon you. Despite your youthful arrogance, you amuse me, Kay. It is such a pity to lose you to this. Now be gone. visit with Voida only strengthened my resolve. His power uncontested by mortals, he had fallen to another enemy. Decadence has claimed itself many a great warrior.
And so I left that place, with clear knowledge of what sort of monster I would become if I let my curse consume me, and with an ally for the future. The darkness was soothing, and in the distance, sharp and sweet, came the scent of spilt blood. A triad congregates at the roof of the world, Cain. A plot to twist the land to shape the world. North is where your vengeance lies. In my travels, I learned much about the legend of Janos Audrin. Here in this quaint pastoral village of Ustenheim, that dark enemy was born. Janos preyed upon its peasants until he was finally hunted down and executed.
<laughs> the poor wretch was warped beyond recognition. To think it was once human. Such strange creatures that had been spawned by this dark magic. Things half insect and half mammal. Human torsos grafted onto abominations of the flesh. Sick as it was, I couldn't help but admire its creator's ingenuity. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your magic energy recovers more quickly, for our blood enhances. If it could be said that a land descended into madness would be an accurate account of Dark Eden. A garden of horrors, seeded with sick perversion of nature's design. I knew that this Dark Eden I had trespassed upon would continue to grow until all of Nosgoth was consumed. Magic seethed and shifted. I watched the dome of energy as it expanded, absorbing and recreating, consuming a life and leaving behind only a twisted parody. Oh. I passed through the wall unharmed. It seemed the magic only preyed on things that were alive and pure. Or perhaps it simply decided that I was twisted enough.
A tower stood in the distance. From its apex spewed the vortex of energy that shaped the lands below. The surface of the castle belied its interior, for it was far larger inside than out. With the powers the circle had at its disposal, it would have been simple to distort space to accommodate this strange structure. The sorcerer's sanctuary, his laboratory. Inside was all manner of items arcane. Pickled bodies, dissected corpses, both man and beast, and metal construct that heaved arcs of energy into the air. I sensed more than one force being manipulated in this place. Strange. Rarely did a sorcerer condescend to work with others. Oh, please, help me, kind sir! Implode. Help 
Convenient. This armor, wrought with the blood of noblemen, drains the blood from my enemies for me, leaving me to focus on the slaughter at hand. Flesh armor. Flesh armor. Hey, Victor! Hey, 
is a spell worthy of the necromancer himself. This allows me to dissect a creature's soul from its vessel of flesh. For these poor wretches, only oblivion awaits. <laughs> Ah, not one, but three. Dejul the Energist, Bane the Druid, and Anacroth the Alchemist. How considerate of them to hasten my search. So the scourge of the circle has arrived. Fear him not, Bane. He is but a whelp. His soul is ours for the taking. Don't be ridiculous, Malik. To our aid. Ooh. Damn you, Alchemist. I had not come this far only to have my quarry escape. Vengeance. Vengeance for my eternity of suffering. Welp. As if you knew what eternity was. Grovel before your true master. Never. From crotch to gizzard and feed what's left to your brides. As Vorador clashed against Malik, I gave pursuit to the fleeing wizards, the Jewel and Bane. I danced their dance. When the time came, they would dance upon my sword. His magic is weak! He is an affront to nature itself! It is our duty to purify him! <laughs> Antler headdress had broken in the fight, but power still resided in its ivory form. from an alloy akin to lead, heavy and malleable, woven into fine links. The energy she controlled was stored in this garment. I 
found Malik's helmet amongst the scattered remnants of his armor, whole and intact. Vorador had finally laid his old adversary to rest. The helmet of Malak I placed before the pillar of conflict. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The pillar of... The act had taken on the feel of ritual. Isn't it strange how we must bribe our gods to stay? At the foot of the energy pillar, I set the cloak of Dejul. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The antler headdress of the druid bane I lay before the nature pillar. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. You must seek Azimuth the Planar at the heart of Avernus. Three instruments await you to aid you in your quest. But first, you must rise and you must fall and find your salvation in between. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your strength has increased, for our blood enhances.
Avernus consumed itself before my eyes. Flesh armor. The gate of Avernus opened slowly before me, daring me to cross the threshold. Who was I to reject such an invitation?
The city was paved in blood and flesh, yet what would have appalled me in life only tempted me in death. Once I would have felt horror, now only hunger remained. <laughs> Avernus lay in ruins before me. Whatever hand slaughtered its people ravaged the city as well. The beast paused for a moment, drooling in anticipation of the fine meal he saw before him. To his disappointment, he would not find me such easy prey. I felt its eyes upon me, eager, hungry, as if it longed to rip my heart out and eat it before me as I died. I laughed as the onslaught began. Perhaps when it was over, it would be the other way around. <laughs>
Avernus was a religious autocracy, with the cathedral as its dais of power. Though the city lay in ruins, the cathedral remained untouched. The demons knew better than to bite the hand that feeds them.
And Hashak Gix spoke unto the world, and all who heard trembled. Bring me your firstborn, and shed their blood upon the altar of the world, so that I may take nourishment from them. Do this without question, or suffer my wrath for eternity. And its will was done.
Time fades even legend, and the origin of Soul Reaver has been lost long ago. But its purpose remains, to feed on the souls of any creature it strikes. Kindred, this blade and I. The Soul Reaver. Blood shower. Oh, 
This armor was spawned in the most impure of spirit forges, tempered from the seething agony of tortured souls. The metal exists only partially in the human realm, causing it to fade between tangible and ethereal states. Above me stood a memory, etched in stained glass. Ah, what's this? I had not even realized the blade and the raiment were here. You wear those trinkets well, Cain. But I do believe that they would look better on me. The matriarch of Avernus, the Lady Azimuth. Her magical planing skills summon demons through runes inscribed in human blood. Come to me, my children. We shall ravage Nosgoth together. Oh, little man, have they sent you to stop me? <laughs> my children shall rip you apart. Come, my demon, let us sup on vampire blood. <laughs> For all her magic, the Lady Azimuth was little in trouble. Once her demonic thralls had been dispatched, she fell quickly to my blade. Azimuth's third eye, a gift from the Pillar of Dimensions, allowed the planar sight into other realms. The Pillar reclaims its own. It will deliver you in time.
Before the dimension pillar, I lay the eye of Azimuth. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Well done. You have found Mobius's toy. Azimuth, not content with summoning demonic thrall, stole the time-streaming device in order to gather creatures from other ages as well. Take care of the device, Cain. It will deliver you in time. The legions of the Nemesis are on the march from the north, crushing all in their path. T'was not too long ago that the Nemesis was known as William the Just, a caring and gentle benefactor of the land. But as his army grew in strength and he himself grew in power, the veil of tyranny fell and one kingdom was not enough. So many cities, so many dead. Willendorf will be sure to follow. The nemesis must be stopped or all shall be lost. How can one stop an army? You must rally the forces of Willendorf. They are the last hope of Nosgoth. Iron sword. Spiked mace. The spectre of Ariel led me to Wollendorf. If I was to defeat the next member of the circle, I needed to understand his machination. With this vague advice in mind, I set forth on the road to Wollendorf. <laughs> Strange, isn't it, Cain, that one cannot quite accept that which sustains him. You in your death, and me in mine. But death cannot reign in a world without life, and soon you will find the quest ahead of you is yours and yours alone. I can assist you no longer. Willendorf. Proud defender of the realm with its warrior elite and mighty ruler, King Ottmar. The Lion Throne had once held my allegiance, but Willendorf's days of glory had passed. 
It was the last bastion against an unruly future. spell I can tear a creature's soul from its body, leaving its vacant flesh mine to control. <laughs> Blood shower. Spirit Rack.
The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your strength has increased, for our blood enhances. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Unlike the mask of disguise, this spell actually allows me to cast away the guise of death for a time, allowing me to walk among the living undisturbed. The spell also provides a visage of nobility, for there are many who would easily divulge more to those of highborn blood. Mighty Willendorf had sliced open the belly of the earth, reaping a bounty of precious metals and unearthing ancient secrets. Of these secrets, I had heard of a tomb that contained an ancient forefather of King Ottmar himself. Within the tomb, a fountain of blood would allow me to cast the most noble of illusions and gain entry to the city of the mighty lion. the great library of Willendorf. Filled with dull tomes of trite accounts by pompous historians about matters that couldn't possibly be of interest to anyone but themselves. The book spoke of the birth of the circle. The circle served the pillars, protectorates to the strange power that gives life to our land. At the unlikely death of a member, the circle remains broken for a time until the pillars can cull a worthy successor. I came upon another book of interest, buried deep amongst the library tomes. It spoke of a small cult that existed in Nosgoth ages past. Wherever they travelled, strange tales of human possession would follow. Little is known of the god they worshipped.
The court of King Otmar. Shades of my former existence. Proud and self-absorbed. Surrounded by all the finery of the realm. Secure in their ignorance. As I walked among them, I smirked, thinking of the carnage that would befall them at the hands of the legions of the Nemesis. Glorious flames and the inevitable rape and pillage. Out of my way, peasant. The stench of the fields hangs over you like a pall. The king sees no one. He is in mourning for the princess. He'll be in mourning for his kingdom soon. And he'll mourn for you even sooner if you don't get out of my way. Ooh! And so I won my audience, such as it was, with Otmar. He cared not for the invading armies from the north, only of the plight of his child. Her birthday present. To celebrate her birthday, I declared a contest. Whoever created the finest doll in the realm would be granted a royal favor. Hundreds of dolls were brought, but the winner was obvious. Elzevir the doll maker created a toy of such beauty that all were captivated by it. And all he would take in payment was a lock of her hair. Soon after, she became like this, a lifeless puppet. Whoever restores her to her former self shall have this kingdom! Thus, my hunt for the Dollmaker began. My daughter. I fear I shall never hear her delicate laugh again. Oh. Otmar slumped on his throne like a rag doll, his beard matted with tears of his own self-pity. In my court, he would have long since been usurped by one stronger, but in Willendorf, they worshipped him, even in his weakness. I wondered what Willendorf would do when Otmar's death finally arrived. Through whispers of the court, I learned that the army of the Last Hope, Willendorf's proud militia, was in no condition to fight the invading legions of the Nemesis. They were busy scouring the lands to the north in search of the Dollmaker and Ottmar's daughter. I also learned of a tunnel which would take me rapidly from Willendorf to the suspected area. Spirit Rack uh. 
Wraith armor. Iron armor. This was once the most academic of cities, housing some of the most prestigious universities in all of Nosgoth. While I would not weep over lost tomes, I detested the sight of scars left upon the world at the hands of the Nemesis.
control mind. Spirit death.
Spirit Rack. Elsevier, 
I have come for the soul. So, Otma sent you to kill me, eh? I can smell him on you. Or is that the stench of the grave? <laughs> Dollmaker, I have no time for these games. The soul is mine! I earned it! Otmar gave it to me! Then you shall earn it with blood. You shall not have it! Mine! 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 <laughs> Farewell, my love. <laughs> I was lucky to have made you. <laughs> <laughs> what an odd little man. Now, to find the soul. Elsevier imprisoned the girl's soul in a small fabric doll. The old man's intentions I shall never know. I entered the court with the dollmaker's head in one hand and the doll containing the girl's soul in the other. I placed them both before the king and watched his eyes catch fire. With the doll in their possession, the court's sorcerers could restore his daughter's soul. I do not know that I can thank you enough, warrior. My kingdom is but a small price to pay for my daughter's life. Willendorf is yours if you wish it. It is not your kingdom I desire, but your army, Otmar. I require troops to vanquish the horde that descends upon us from the north. Very well. Courtiers, fetch me my armor and mace. There is war to be waged! The 
The scourge of Nosgoth is upon us, friends. We shall die today as heroes, lest we live tomorrow as slaves. Ready thine arms for Nosgoth! <laughs> In the distance I saw the Nemesis armies march forward, a black tide that would soon wash over the armies of the Hope. They came at me in throngs, no further as strong as that inspired by a madman. The Nemesis armies were fierce and showed no signs of subsiding. The tide turned with Otmar's death. I watched as the remaining survivors of the armies of hope fled to the safety of the forest. The battle had decided its victor. The fate of Nosgoth now lay in the Nemesis hands. I sated my thirst on warriors of Horde and Hope alike, the dying relinquishing their final moments to give me strength. At once the battlefield was gone. Where the ground was caked with blood and dirt, there was lush greenery. Where chaos reigned only moments before, this damning calm prevailed. Alas, it seemed I was stranded here. The time-streaming device lay in pieces at my feet. You stand idle as vermin destroy your crops. No! Does your house burn? No! Will you allow this evil to continue? No! Will the wickedness end? Yes! Do you believe? Yes! yes! Then take me to your king so that I can prepare you for the onslaught. So it seemed I was in the land of William the Just. Fifty years before the battle I had just escaped would take place. The stronghold of William the Just. It was time for me to pay a visit to he who would become the nemesis and force Nosgoth on its knees.
Yes, the, these weapons you've provided will see to that. Uh, uh, pray tell, Mobius, what game do you play? None, my lord. I only wish to aid you in vanquishing your foes. The weapons are but a token of my goodwill. A and the news you bring, a vampire said to slay me? Where did you come upon such knowledge? It is of no consequence, sire. It was only out of concern for your majesty's life. Perhaps, perhaps. Very well, then. You may leave me now, but should I wish to speak to you? I will know, Your Majesty, and I shall be there in time. Ah, yes, the vampire. Mobius oh. told me you would come. <laughs> 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 Bay Victor! Bay Victor! A 
As his guards rushed to save him, William the Just's blood was already renewing my strength, replacing the life his sword had stolen from my veins. The poor fools come to aid their fallen leader. Let us have some amusement. A time-streaming device. Strange. When coincidence seems too convenient, I prefer to call it fate. With William the Just dead, Mobius's plans have been thwarted. His pawn was removed from the game.
I found myself once more in the Nosgoth I knew. The carnage from battle was gone. Yet there was something amiss. From the distance, I heard cries, and a breeze from the south carried with it the faint odor of vampire blood. It would seem the folly fell upon my own shoulders. With their sainted King William dared by my hand, the people of the land were consumed by a hunger all their own, for vampire blood. As I wandered about more, the shrieking and cheering became more apparent and defined. There was some sort of gathering to the south, for with each cheer I smelled an outpour of blood. The people will not rest until Nosgoth is purged of your kind. I had been betrayed. In my haste, I had not realized it before. That sigil on his forehead, the Oracle of Nosgoth, was in fact the time streamer Mobius, and I had followed his advice. How much of my quest was of his design? Willendorf, the battle of the last stand, William the Just? Was this the trap he had fashioned for me? We will send you back to the grave whence you came, vampire. <laughs> I have seen the future, Ken. You are not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Let us call upon the puppets from the past!
from the present. And from ages yet to come. Ironic. By going back in time and altering the past, you turn William the Just into the Nemesis. I, you have seen my plan, Vampire, as I've seen your destiny. The future says you die. But I am dead. As are you. I knew that Mobius's hourglass was the focus of his time-streaming magic. Farewell, sorcerer. The sands of time have ceased to flow for you. You betrayed us, Mortanius. You had Cain killed and turned him into a monster. You set him upon us. It had to be. Napraptor's insanity poisoned all of our minds. The Circle had failed in its sworn duties. It had to be destroyed. Failed our duties? Idiot! The Circle exists for us. We don't exist for it. Our powers will save or damn Nosgoth at our whim. Stand with us, Mortanius, or die. Then I shall die. The circle is to be destroyed. You have to die as well, Necromancer. I admire your cunning, but you will not escape your fate. Nay, I will embrace it, but my death will leave one more to take, Princeling. Finish me! Thank <laughs> you. 
and its calculated repercussions is but the first act in my theater of grand guignol, of which you are the tragic hero. Play on, little vampire. Play on. Fay Victus! magic was contained within the metal of the scales and would eventually be released back into the pillar from whence it came. The scales of Anacroth I lay before the pillar of states. The pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. The death orb of Mortanius had given the necromancer dominion over the grave. I had thought him the last of the circle, and yet he spoke of another. Before the Pillar of Death, I lay the Orb of Mortanius. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Pay <laughs> <Hey>, Victus! <laughs> I am the last pillar, the only survivor of the Circle of Nine. At my whim, the world will be healed or damned. At my whim. In his life, he was unknown, a petty noble. In death, he was unknown. Yet by choosing oblivion, he restored balance to the land. Shades cast no shadows.
Once I embraced my powers, I realized that Vorador was correct. We are gods. Dark gods. And it is our duty to thin the herd. <laughs> Oh, my God. 